नमस्ते सर कैसे हैं मैं ठीक हूँ थोड़ा सा इंट्रोडक्शन दे दीजिए जो पहली बार आपको देख रहे हैं सुन रहे हैं सो माई नेम इज प्रसन्न आई एम आई एसोसिएट प्रोफेसर इन आई एस बी इंडियन स्कूल ऑफ बिजनेस जो हैदराबाद में है हमारा दो कैंपस है हैदराबाद और मोहाली uh, मैं फाइनेंस पढ़ाता हूँ एरिया ऑफ रिसर्च बैंकिंग है इंडियन बैंकिंग इस्पेशली जो दो हज़ार आठ से जो प्रॉब्लम हुआ है बैंकिंग में सो आई एम स्टडिंग दैट उससे क्या क्या कॉन्सिक्वेंस हुए हैं एंड हाउ इट्स इम्पैक्टिंग द इकोनॉमी टूडे सो दैट्स माई एरिया ऑफ रिसर्च प्रीडोमिनेटली आई स्पेंड मोस्ट ऑफ माई टाइम थिंकिंग अबाउट दैट ओके आई टीच इंडियन फाइनेंशियल सिस्टम इन इन आई एस बी दिस इज अ कोर्स ऑन कोर्सरा ऑल्सो राइट दिस वो तो टैक्स ट्रेडिंग के ऊपर है ट्रेडिंग स्ट्रेटजीज सो मैं पहले ट्रेडिंग भी करता था एलगोरिथमिक ट्रेडिंग सो इट्स अ कोर्स ऑन ट्रेडिंग स्ट्रेटजीज बट टीचिंग और रिसर्च मेरा बैंकिंग के ऊपर है अच्छा सो शुड बी डू इट इन इंग्लिश और हिंदी में आई आई एम मोर कम्फर्टेबल आई कैन अंडरस्टैंड इंग्लिश एंड स्पीक ब्रोकन आई कैन अंडरस्टैंड हिंदी एंड स्पीक ब्रोकन हिंदी ओके बट फेयर वी कैन डू इट इन इंग्लिश आई डोंट माइंड सो रिसेंटली यू सो द न्यूज दैट इफेक्टिवली रुपीज नाइन इन पेट्रोल प्राइस इज बिन डिक्रीज बाई सेंटर राइट एक्साइज कट्स and similarly uh, with rupees 5 or 6 in diesel how do you see uh, that step because earlier cuts in december i think those were more to give relief to the people because suddenly there was uh, you know petrol was at 105 in delhi and then they had to cut it back to 95 something like that right so that was primarily to give relief to the people because so many people were complaining but now people understand that this is majorly due to the ukraine war right but uh the inflation is rising so i think there is a some uh, thinking behind that step of reducing excise duties that maybe this is impacting inflation oil oil prices because that is something that increases your business cost in every field right so how much that is related to inflation and uh, how much is only you know po- uh, what can i say uh, to give relief to the people uh, something like that yeah i think uh, see this policy of uh, taxing only one commodity whatever it is may not be a great idea and and when prices went down uh, the taxes that were levied on fuel was you know as you know is huge mm-hmm. so in a way that way reducing that is welcome but as far as inflation is concerned yes in the short run it will reduce you know by reducing taxes mm-hmm. but in the long run uh it is not just uh you know fuel that that leads to inflation so the current main source of inflation if you look at the numbers carefully even before february 24th in the globally uh you inflation had started touching 6 7% you know country like turkey had done 50% even before had nothing to do with russia mm-hmm. so what happened is most countries of the world thought that you can just solve the problem by printing notes in the us for example us fed <laughs> their total currency went up from 4.75 trillion to almost 9 trillion basically they printed notes to get out of the problem now that as milton friedman puts it inflation is always and everywhere a monetary problem you know that's what he says mm. so when you have more money and less goods and services that is where you have inflation sustained long term inflation mm. fortunately india did not do that so ours is mostly a supply driven you know supply shock driven short term phenomena so that way a uh, supply side this cutting taxes is a right measure right way so we did not like print notes like crazy if you see our money supply there was an increase but not anywhere close to um, if you remember most economists were suggesting give this free that free and all that fortunately indian policy makers did not do that so that way i think this is good move but uh, uh, this alone will not uh reduce inflation beyond a point because if crude price again climbs uh 9 rupees 10 rupees can be caught, you know one day uh, rise another uh, event in ukraine uh takes now it we are at 110 if it goes to 125 this gets nullified 110 in your state i think no no 110 dollar uh, per oh, barrel. barrel i'm talking about okay. global sorry okay. so 110 dollars per yeah. barrel uh one more negative uh, news in ukraine can take it to 125 it had touched 130 mm. that will completely nullify this uh, tax relief and beyond this i do, i don't know uh, the, is there a scope to reduce but the bigger question is now that they are they are they are cut this so their total tax uh, projection was 27 lakh crore this year what is going to happen to that now if what will so what my worry is that that 
how is the government going to either uh, you know get this uh, money or are they going to reduce expenditure uh, yeah. will when it will comes you mentioned uh, milton friedman yeah. right he would have definitely suggested some cuts in spending no so he would yes uh, that's that's possible uh, but the point is there also it's a bit nuanced this year yeah. this finance minister amazing thing about if you ask me one great thing about this finance minister there are a lot of things which are very good is conservative budgeting she keeps so much space this year for example what she budgeted was 22 lakh crore of tax collection and she will end up collect, she must have ended up collecting 27 lakh crore now on 27 she is actually budgeted no growth zero growth even if you have a zero gdp growth you will still make 27 lakh crore so even if there is a 10% nominal gdp growth real gdp of what you know say 6% this year so we will do 30 lakh crore so this 2 lakh crore that loss that we have suffered uh, so uh, my best case scenario is it will not impact uh, our total revenue and we should be okay so that way i think uh, we may not have to print money to fund expenditure so biggest worry when you think about inflation common people only think about this uh, uh, you know price rise input costs and all think about it if money in the country is only so much if some price rises something else has to fall so if from your pocket if you have to spend more on petrol you have to spend less on something else That's so it true. it cannot raise overall prices it raises overall prices is when you start printing notes to support this which is what sri lanka is doing right now hmm. that is where you will have a crazy inflation 50% 70% 100% that kind of inflation so i don't think that that's going to happen in india because the cushion available in the budget is so much it's a ultra ultra conservative budget mm. so i think we'll be fine end of the year uh, unless this ukraine becomes really really bad so i think uh, can't become worse than this i don't know maybe some you know world war type you know <laughs> doomsday that that scenario yeah. things can always get worse uh, <coughs> but i think it's a, in short i think it's a welcome move Uh, but as far as inflation is concerned in in the short run of course it will reduce for a couple of months hmm. but it ultimately depends on what happens on money supply front uh, oh. i think we are we are fine on that we have not done the mistakes of other countries yeah i think us printed what 4 trillion dollars yeah, yeah double yeah. so so the 2008 they doubled uh, uh, so from 1 to 2 and this time they doubled uh, from 3.75 or 4 to 9 so i think two two times they printed checks yeah, yeah uh, that's what one they do. one was trump yeah 2 trillion dollars yeah, yeah, and then another yeah. 2 yes, trillion yes, by yes. by that's why they were able to give all kinds of unemployment allowance this that everything yeah the only difference between us and india is because rest of the world is willing to absorb those dollars uh, hmm. you know they are fine you know they they so far they are fine as long as rest of the world is hold, willing to hold these forex reserves uh, as these dollars as forex reserves and invest in their own uh you know uh, government securities hmm. uh, their dollar will not collapse but don't know how long this will go on but as long as party is going on it's fine for them yeah but even by their standards people are very uh, you know uncomfortable right now even in the united states yeah. right because they are historically so accustomed to low inflation yeah yeah uh, their inflation is not going to go away simply yeah. their inflation will be very painful yeah. so their inflation is <clears throat> that's what indian inflation now is because of these shocks so as soon as these shocks go away we will not have that of course there is some demand component but majorly it's because of these shocks hmm. whereas in those countries the inflation there is because they printed more notes yeah and that is not going to go away unless they reduce money supply and that will be painful Hmm. because when it it created you know uh, uh, and on the positive side when it created all those uh, good things when you withdraw it will also it will it will create those bad things also so somebody hmm. will have to pay that political price hmm. or or all that co- you know unemployment all that will come back so it's like the 1980 episode there hmm. uh, paul walker had to take interest rate up double digits uh, in the us to reduce inflation something hmm. like that may have to be done and they won't be able to get away by cutting petrol prices and all that Yeah. because it's a money problem you know in in us if you cut some prices because the issue is there is too much money some other price will go up hmm. so i think we have to differentiate why there is inflation in developed countries in turkey and all other countries why it's in india in india it's this outside shock so do you envision something like paul volcker kind of strategy coming back in the us yeah i think they may have to do it eventually i don't okay. see how uh, you know unless the other option is let's say you have something like a internet again so other see there are only two options either reduce money supply or increase pro, uh, goods and services Now, you can't increase goods and services overnight let's say you have some other major 
invention like the inter, uh, you know so use like the internet or something mm. structurally different mm. and that makes us m- even more competitive in the next 5 years we have uh, metaverse sir something is something like that <laughs> if something like that happens yeah. then uh, that will absorb this extra money because mm. you have then more goods and services unless that happens uh, which is unlikely in the very short run i think they will have to hike in, see ultimately hiking interest rate is nothing but it's a signal that central bank is going to absorb money from the market hmm. so it's not about that f- so they target a fed funds rate so they are already behind the curve i think you know you, it, this will be painful uh, since you teach uh, you know trading and strategies yeah, yeah. right now everybody's portfolio is in red yeah. these days or jumping up and down never know when to pull off and when to put more money there yeah. so what are the factors driving that no this is this you know current shock and you know uh, it it was it was too good to be true some 6 months ago mm. everything was going uh, because about, it bounced back so quickly yeah, from the yeah, covid yeah, crisis yeah yeah so every see if you if you take if you step back uh, uh, takes like 6 to 9 months ago everything was going in in our favor like uh, you had china was cracking down on all kinds of investment so people were going out of china and coming to india us was pumping money and we used you know we benefit from that uh, by we we'll get additional investments so domestically also we had lot of reforms going on uh, now if you see all these three factors mm. have taken a negative turn uh, you know domestic reform as you know starting from farm law ta- you know from there there is there has been a u turn yeah uh, china there are you know those 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 issues not a different set of issues and us is no more you know giving you free money which can come here hmm. so all those things which were like working as uh, tailwinds have now become headwinds hmm. so that obviously markets would collapse but i still feel it's not that bad you know i i i don't know who is who are those everybody who is losing money because if i look at my portfolio it's it's fine <laughs> because, <laughs> because mar- you are the master no i'm not the master but you invest regularly yeah. over a period of time and then these are you should have the stomach to take these things you know it's like 18000 nifty to 16000 nifty is not even mutual funds are not performing well yeah yeah if you take a short term view but someone who has invested regularly every month let's mm. say over 5 years you take his or her portfolio yeah. they'll be doing very well very very well mm. you know 16000 itself let's say if the market had not gone to 18000 if it was 16000 we would be very very happy at 16000 itself because it went from 18000 we have that the reference point and you know yeah. that's again prospect theory by kanaman and twasky the point is we always look from a reference point point of view yeah. uh, we never look absolute otherwise uh, for a rich person worrying about some small loss is is meaningless but mm. that's what prospect theory shows mm. we always evaluate things from a reference point and now this 18150 nifty has become a reference point mm. otherwise i see this you know as long as long term measures are in place uh, i don't see a problem you know i people should they should not do anything fancy just continue your sips Hmm. you know okay. and then forget it and never invest money that you would need for your day to day activities in equities that's a rule number 1 hmm. as long as you have not done that you have some insurance you have some emergency liquid funds hmm. why should you bother real estate nobody bothers right whether what is your price today or tomorrow nobody checks hmm. that is why you have people making money in real estate hmm. principal reason people don't make money in stocks is because they check it every day that's the worst thing you can do and th- and there is credible research which shows that those who are exposed to prices regularly do worse hmm so people who do well are those who just forget hmm so my advice will be just continue your sips and don't even look at it for next few years so do you think the people who invest for example the new year starts uh, in april right yeah. uh would investing lump sum in april would be a better choice rather than doing sip because usually usually price keeps increasing every month slightly so rather than investing every uh, the average uh, you know value of that share the price equity will be yeah. uh, lower uh, invested value will be lower when you invest in april for example and if you do sip it will keep increasing average yeah so investing early lump sum would be better or sip is a better choice so what what you're saying in the us there is uh, reasonable evidence to what you're saying it's called january effect okay uh because people sell in december 
so market goes down and if you buy in january uh, people have shown you tend to make uh, on an average more money than buying in other months yeah. but even after that even if you account for that on an average it makes sense to invest regularly it's very hard to see the there are careful studies and you can look at data if you miss some 15 days in the market some 15 days best 15 20 days your returns will be like 70% lower than what you're making and nobody knows which 15 days or which 18 days are those best days and therefore my advice despite this uh, you know january effect i don't know whether april effect works january effect in the us works and people have uh, studied it and now it doesn't work now it used to work when they wrote the paper mm. uh, but i would still suggest it it makes sense to go regularly okay. and uh, unless you have an expertise let's say you have some information that some company is going to do well then it makes sense to uh, and and it's backed by some research and then it makes sense to put in more money otherwise index it's 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 a boring advice i know it's not uh, you know it's no, not, no it's uh, very uh, good advice it, actually it, it works you know i i'll give an example a friend of mine recently called me and said uh, i had invested some some money uh, some time ago but the unfortunately the portfolio manager passed away hmm. so i completely forgot about it and can you check uh, you know what has happened to that and i said oh, he's a very close friend and <coughs> i i just looked at his account he had put in some 1 and 1/2 lakhs and which is now become 13 or 14 lakhs you know, this is after this correction it's still 14 lakhs i told him uh, you know if you had checked it at any point and it's driven by one stock tata lx who kn- and this portfolio manager what he's done he's done randomly put into all kinds of stock random some psu bhl this that and all that out of that one of them has clicked clicked majorly see the performance of tata lx over the last 6 7 years it's gone up like crazy several hundred percent Hmm. so there he put some money some 10000 or 20000 there also and that has become now several lakhs so and now this man says this is called disposition effect there is a very good uh, theory called disposition effect that people small gains you want to sell and you want to hold on to losses the day i told him now he wants to sell off i told him look this the same mistake the reason you made money is you didn't check it <laughs> right unless the, the, uh, if if you are a, like a sadhu and uh, or or somebody with total control self control yeah. i think you should check it on the day of your retirement or the day when you when the purpose when you for which you invested yeah you will do far better than these people who spend all their time now with mobile and internet and it, yeah. it i think it's become worse So, so it only makes sense for day to day intraday yeah, trade yeah and, and so. evidence there and i've looked at it carefully uh, because uh, we work with nse nse funds a lab in our school hmm. 99.8% of the investors lose money these traders even when the market is going up that's fun Hmm. not when it's going down it's a di- i understand because now because they get into derivatives they they don't understand options they think that writing options is a is, is free money uh, uh, and without understanding the payoffs even when markets are doing good these day trader kind of people they lose money so forget about a very simple rule whenever i put money i lose money <laughs> <laughs> no no <laughs> except it's, for it's, the first year that i put yeah. then it became addictive yeah But it becomes should, addictive yeah. and and i think the uh, i'm not saying there are not uh, there are people who are uh, there are no people who are uh, who are skilled hmm. there will be people who are skilled but on an average is it an art that you can learn i don't know i am not an expert trader i am an academician so i should mm. not be talking too much about trading <laughs> uh, but then there is there is there is a very book very good book uh the remnants of a stock operator anyone who is interested in trading should read that book okay. this is by somebody called edwin uh, edwin lefferway this is written in 1920s this guy was so successful trader in the us hmm. that time it was a concept of bucket shops there was no brokering and all this market making so you go and bet in a bucket shop hmm. and people had uh so he was so famous that he would always win it's like a bet that this will go up or go down hmm. they would they had banned him almost all bucket shops because the other side would lose it's a zero sum game unlike mm. now yeah so then he had to disguise and send someone else to trade but people figured out that this is this guy's person <laughs> right he had become that famous so there are some people like that but his mm. point is so he has a very famous uh, statement mm. that it is not about being right it is about sitting tight when you're right mm. so it's it's averaging up not averaging down that's what you would follow so he he realized that it's only some of the bets that you will win because market shows momentum so this my friend made money so it was small so 10 to 15 uh, you know 1 1 lakh becoming 15 lakhs what if what if he had put in 10 crores 
you know it would have become you know whatever he would have been at a it different would have level. contested elections so the reason is tata elixi because he sat on tata elixi unknowingly it was unknowing if he had known he would have maybe he would have exited sold it long back two lakhs long back long, long back he would have exited so tata elixi there is no way he would have sat on it because he would have he would have thought 10000 now has become 30000 so yeah. let's so those who can overcome that temptation and understand that this is a momentum game this is not an averaging game the winners will keep winning google will keep winning you know so it's once you having I, there are a lot of people who invested infosys early but very few people who who have in, you know made their 10 rupees into whatever lakhs today hmm. so that's what he says it's not about just being right he says it's easy to be right but can you sit tight when you're right hmm. you know that's you know that's a question people should ask themselves so if if they can do that and then do you have stomach to take losses that's interesting true so that's yeah. that's traders i think there are su- such people should trade but on an average my at least you know i i am not a great trader so you you would advise that whatever invest in investments you make you uh, make into a lot of uh, make it more diversified yeah yeah for people like rather me, than putting a one sum in one stock or two stocks you thin it out right unless you have a reason to believe that this is a next google or something and let's say you have expertise on something and or or you like you use a product of a company mm. and you think that this is so good that this is going to be the next thing and market has not figured out but most of the investors we know are not like that yeah they are not going to go into the company's financials yeah. so they are not going to say research on whether what products it is coming up with and all that no yeah, uh, yeah. They, they don't do that but yeah. there are people for example peter lynch again another book your reader your viewers should uh, read those who are interested hmm. it's a very famous book one up on wall street okay. and he was considered the most uh, successful fund manager ever hmm. uh, in the 90s so his point is his his whole thesis which i may not fully agree with is that people like you and me can outperform professional fund managers his mm. point is we don't operate within those restrictions within which they operate monthly performance quarterly performance investors pressure uh, uh, year end bonus when we put in our own money mm. so his point is look look carefully what your children are buying what your spouse is buying what your neighbors are buying and that should be the starting point for a equity research and suppose you stay in a hotel and and if you like that uh, thing uh, you know experience there and once you like start liking some product then you start your equity research find out whether it's a listed firm and look at its valuation find mm. out what their competitors are doing talk about various other people who so his whole research was he considered investing as a art science and leg work mm. so if you're willing to do that leg work visit the facility talk to competitors and and the biggest sign he would say that if competitors he would ask a competitor you know who is your biggest threat if most competitors say this guy is an upcoming threat and all that and then the market has not figured out and and he was famous for 10 baggers you know for example he he found a company which was that time doing this uh, funeral service you know in the us you have this concept people pay for their own funeral and you mm-hmm. know you can pay like an insurance because funeral space and coffin and such a dirty whatever you call it and he figured out that that's or you can look at it the way and say noble also whatever so but not something which is fancy you know mainstream I, I, name. yeah i didn't mean that time yeah uh, uh, and and he figured out some toys like that you know children were using toys uh, some uh, women uh, wear based on his wife's feedback so most of his he, he what he shows in his book most of his so called 10 baggers he was famous for 10 baggers he buys and price multiplies 10 times where through this kind of research mm. and not using these fancy computers and you know uh, talking to analysts and all that so his whole thesis is uh, quite opposite of what i am saying so his thesis is that you and me can outperform if you are willing to spend that time and uh, effort and you need not be a fund manager but i such i don't think people will do that uh leg so work. it's <laughs> it's leg work is important that leg work is the most important point yeah. uh, so it's better to passively invest in index yeah because and people don't have that kind of time also and inclination also yeah 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 see once you do some projects lay, yeah. say you do for two two companies yeah, yeah. and you make money right. then you have an incentive to yeah, do that yeah, right yeah, yeah. but people are not connected to that kind of world so right. only professionals are there who maybe their friends right. they will uh, you know 
make maybe talk about that and maybe train them or something like right, that right. so maybe they will see are my friend is doing so good yeah. maybe i should try right. so something but that world is so different right. from you know right. because it's very nascent at very yeah. nascent stage yeah, yeah. even now yeah, right yeah, yeah. So, but his whole point is, you don't need these sophisticated things to make money. That's sure. his point. As long as you have common sense, patience, and yeah. you, your ears and eyes are open, uh, you can make money. That's his point. So, basically, all the human instincts you <laughs> have to control. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sabhi indriyon pe control. Haan, indriyon pe control. <laughs> Isi liye, I want to do an experiment. Main karna hmm. Ki I want to do an experiment where I would take a control group of traders and a treatment group of traders. and this treatment group would do meditation and all that like uh, whatever it is and mm. the control group wouldn't and then i want to see whether it makes a difference to my 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 gut says based on all that i have read about these successful investors uh, this should make a difference uh, mm. you know jo uh, indriyon pe control should make a difference mm. in my view so i don't know but, uh, but uh, that's a key point interesting uh, not this is not for people who look at it like a game or a Hmm. or uh, the worst thing worst are those who take it as a personal judgment on their ability if hmm. you are somebody who takes that stock price as a sign of your ability uh, those people will you know because they don't want to accept that defeat then keep averaging down averaging down is a sure shot uh, invitation for uh, losing shot averaging down in as simple. the stock price keeps falling okay. imagine paytm uh, 2000 mein mila तो 1800, सो so 1800 में खरीदा और खरीद लिया और खरीद लिया क्योंकि मेरा एवरेज कम करना है सो so 1500 आया फिर खरीदा 1000 में आया फिर खरीदा 500 में अभी पैसे एस बैंक फॉर इंस्टेंस इफ यू हैड एवरेज डाउन फ्रॉम 300, सो बाय नाउ यू आर टेन और टेन ट्वेल्व इट्स टक देयर टेन ट्वेल्व ऑल दो नाउ आई थिंक इट्स इट्स अ नाइस वन बट बाई मे बी आई आई डोट आई एम नो वन टू से दैट बट एटलीस्ट बट बट द पॉइंट इज people who take it like that who, who start fighting with it hmm. don't get don't take feedback from the market maybe be humble and yeah, just pull out yeah, the money yeah, yeah. so thing. those kind of people will survive hmm. uh, that's again that lefferve says you know once you realize you're wrong just get out hmm. don't try f- fighting with the market and sit tight when you're right yeah <laughs> sit tight when you're right you know that one thing that can change your life yeah so, you talked about uh, finance minister yes. and her economic policies and trajectory yes on social media and uh, facebook twitter instagram i see a lot of criticism of her yes. you must have encountered it yes, it's yes, very yes. vicious yes extremely vicious uh i don't know what that is is it because you are an expert on economic policy uh her economics does not seem to be so bad and uh, from whatever interaction limited interaction i had uh the fortune of having with her she seems extremely knowledgeable on all the issues so is it uh, something the problem is with economics or there is something else okay so uh, uh, about uh, uh, the finance minister i have only met her once and i have no idea about what she knows what she doesn't uh, that apart but cr- if you see criticism uh, it started from day 1 hmm. how do you know from day 1 that she is bad you know that has to be bias and i told many people so called feminists i in, you know i live in this academic circles and you know academic circles where people think in yeah. so called social sciences i told them that this is misogyny you know you accuse all the so called right wing people of misogyny this is what you're doing how do you know she's bad you know uh, uh, look at her on paper qualification it's as good as anybody else so let's see what she does uh, when she started out uh, the the only thing i didn't like was that csr thing if you remember but after that everything she has done i think she, that csr thing was pulled that, off that's pulled off yeah. that was pulled off but there was this making and 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 uh, i i still feel the csr policy is wrong uh, we'll talk about that yeah also. i think it's totally I wrong i think you have written a paper on yeah, it yeah i have written it got accepted in a top journal also yeah uh, i think it's totally wrong but that's fine you know you need not agree with everything of that everyone does but the way she handled you know the corporate tax cut the the beauty of ta- corporate tax cut is that this is one of the few reforms without any fine print fine print problem any any regular any reform or anything that comes in india right it <coughs> looks very fancy when they announce but when you read the fine print next morning you will realize that half of that uh, good part is taken away by the rules mm. but this one was clean 
very very clean you know whatever number she said that's what it is because right? ambani adani ne banaya tha na ye isliye <laughs> kisi, kisi ne banaya hoga so i i i studied that you know from that point you know from that corporate tax cut uh, uh, point hmm. from there you know ibc the she's you know although ibc started during uh, jetly's time so every time there has been a uh, roadblock you know there has been an attempt to keep it alive mm. uh, uh, revive it you know that that was great and and the way not giving into pressure of populism during uh, covid i know it it's 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 political capital comes from the prime minister mm. uh, but uh, to the extent that finance minister has a role you know every economist uh, most economists suggested that time that you just have to dole out money you know resisting that was and every other country did it resisting that and mm. and we should give credit to my guru who was the ca that time also mm. and the entire team that was there i think that was a big achievement otherwise we would have been if they had just printed money and you know if if they had uh, uh, increased deficits for revenue expenditure we would have been in the same situation as many other not as bad as other countries because india is a larger country so that was again uh, 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 i think it was very well handled and 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 i don't see of course nobody is perfect uh, i would rate her as one of the best finance ministers we have had of course manmohan singh scores much above because uh, that was a you know that kind of reform has ever never happened you know let's you know i'm i'm not a fan of manmohan singh as a prime minister but manmohan singh as a finance minister you know of course it, we can argue it was narsimha rao's political capital and all that which yeah. can be said in this case also that is always number 1 for me because that is a very different kind of uh, india changed completely for that i may be sitting in my village if that had not happened mm. but after that i think i would rate uh, uh, this performance of this finance minister very you very high even higher than harvard economist or significantly higher you know i i think if they had come they would have messed up hmm. uh, because now they will see the problem with many of uh, people like us because we don't have skin in the game hmm. we forget what we were advising one year ago hmm. now we cry about inflation and all the same people who are asking us to throw money are now criticizing us you know india for inflation yeah if we had thrown money inflation eventually you know whatever may be your model in the short run all the supply and all matter but eventually the crazy inflation venezuela type zimbabwe type sri lanka type happens when you print money hmm. that is what india did not do and and both that's rbi very, that's a very good point actually the yeah. people who are advocating yeah uh, that uh, helicopter should, money uh, drop money you should just print money yeah, and yeah, give yeah. people checks people yes. are dying yes, you just yes. give you checks. have to support them yes uh, you know do a dbt yes a direct transfers yes. and all that yes. now the same people are criticizing this level of inflation imagine <laughs> yeah. if that had that if their advice to, had been yeah, accepted yeah. you would have been at 15% by now yeah and then there would have been riots like like in sri lanka Hmm. you know so this 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 is unfortunate if this ukraine thing was not there we would still have some inflation because suddenly what has happened people are doing every kind of revenge shopping revenge buying crazy increase in demand suddenly hmm. but that also you remember when we had slow down people are saying there's no demand in india there's a demand issue you know this government is addressing supply now you know suddenly demand has come from nowhere hmm. right so uh, if if she had gone for what even nobel laureates came and suggested uh, we would have been sitting at maybe 15% now already and uncontrollable hmm. now and and instead she did not do that you know she did gave this minimum you know gave food which was anyway rotting there uh, in fci hmm. that was another great move uh, and and the whole delivery mechanism you know now is very efficient and then they gave some 20000 crore for uh, this pmjdy some poor people and all that mm. you know the funny part is even that money was not fully utilized mm. you know it because the whole point is the entire thing was closed and you give money again i don't know why these people are advocating but that's another great thing and and, and in some i think uh, the way she has handled so far uh, except things like csr which i don't agree uh except things on on banking which my area of uh, uh, study i think something more can be done we mm. need to our credit cycle you know is still stuck uh I, it's not her fault it's a legacy issue but i think more can be done than uh, what except one or two areas like that i think it's been a fabulous performance so let's talk about banking issue because from 2008 the situation started deteriorating and uh, 
uh, the N- issue of uh, non performing assets npas yeah, yeah, was a m- yeah, major one when the yeah, government yeah, came yeah, into power yeah, yeah. so many steps were suggested including bad bank right but right now saying in 2022 saying that this is a leg- legacy issue and because of the mistakes of the congress a uh, lot of people are not buying into it yes that it, you are there for the last 7 8 years now you have to do something about it yes so what can be done to really solve that issue because i think the private investment part is still not yes able to we are yes. not able to restart yes. that yes. most of the investment is being driven by the government in yes. inf- infrastructure and other things yes yes so if you permit me uh, to go yeah. back a little bit if i know your question is about what can be done now yeah uh your viewers should have uh, some idea of what was the kind of mistakes that were done and why it is justified mm. to say that it's still a legacy issue see the 2008 regulation you know most people don't there was a circular issue in august 2008 mm. the circular was that you can restructure loans and you don't have to call it an npa okay the regulation until then was that if you restructure loan let's say I, you have lent to me and i'm struggling right and i am not able to pay and you restructuring could be you give me more time or any of the ways you can reduce my interest rate hmm. or or uh, waive my 20% loan if you do any of these you had to call it an npa non performing asset and make provisions that would impact your capital that day only uh, everybody knows that you have done that okay in 2008 they because uh, anticipating this global financial crisis the spillover effect of that they did this policy that you can restructure without calling it an npa now i am not there is nothing wrong with that during crisis even this time it was done the difference is you will not believe it was continued for seven long years till 2015 even in 2010 when the eco- economic growth was 9% there were quarters where, where we barely we barely missed 10% this was the only country in the history of the world which is growing at 10% and we'll have this this is called forbearance. Mm. So this forbearance is when you are minus 10%. We had forbearance when we were plus 10%. And because this became a ad- addiction. Mm. You know this was an addiction built over 7 years. It was not an addiction which was like a one month one policy. This was withdrawn in 2015. So this existed from 2008 to 2015. And what happened was so think that you are a banker Now you lend me a loan. Mm. Now you know that if I don't pay, you can just restructure. Then why will you screen? Why will you monitor? Why mm. will you do anything? Because you know that it's not going to be an NPA, right? Eventually you can just restructure, and if you restructure a loan, you don't have to call it an NPA. And then eventually in 2013 they introduced some small provisioning. So this completely killed banking discipline. and it it led to all kinds of crony lending in fact i have three four papers on that uh, and some of them published in top journals where we show that you know firm governance deteriorated think about it i am a bad uh, i am a bad ceo right of a firm but i have connection to the manager of the bank lot of firms had have to retain me because of this connection because of this advantage i'm going to get this cheap credit and credit is required it deteriorated firms you know not just banks it deteriorated bank governance firm governance you know credit was given we had 20 30% credit growth mm. and this money was thrown into a ditch you know these bad firms and ultimately promoters what they did they took this money they did related party transaction they created uh, created some shell firms and this money went into shell firms which had no uh, you know no growth no investment not surprisingly by 13 14 we had fallen to again 5 6% growth so this was not a small thing that you can't call it a legacy issue this was a policy which continued for seven long years mm. and if it if 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 you are habituated to something bad for seven long years nobody can solve it in one year or two years it it will take i think it may take 15 years to solve because you have to now what has happened what this government did went to the other extreme of being very strict and these people have become extremely risk averse now from a point of lending to anybody and everybody now we have we have reached a stage they won't lend to good people also mm-hmm. because because of the experiences that we had so we have to go through this you know there is no other option you know once you, this is a problem of a bad policy when you perpetuate a bad policy you will have to go through all those reverse of all those good things for that long to get there is no way you can solve it in a year so i don't think anybody could have solved this banking uh, issues in a year 
uh but by now more could have been done i agree more could have been done than what they have done but uh this this is not a small problem that you know that that uh you know this any arun jetli could have come and and solved it uh, so people have to appreciate the magnitude of the problem it's very interesting that a party which takes so much interest in communication masterful communicators including the prime minister yeah. the biggest one of all yes they did not communicate this at all people i am listening to this for the first time that for 7 years this was going on yes so in fact not 7 years actually 10 years see in uh, officially this for this is called regulatory forbearance this is august 27 2008 circular you just read it it's available on the rbi website and i have i have written like four papers on it 2015 when they did asset quality review mm-hmm. that was uh, rajan's time when they formally withdrew this but actually there also there were some other uh, methods in which you could still do this uh, for example you could convert debt into equity and you could do all kinds of circus actually it was in february 2018 the fe- uh, february circular of 2018 that is where this was completely withdrawn so in in, in a way we had a Stenial. emergency imagine an emergency tablet which is which has very high side effects which you should take only when it's really really bad you know when you're about when if you don't take that person will die such a tablet being given to a person for 7 years full and some small portion of it given for another 2 years this is what was done in india and the prime minister unfortunately what happened was as he said later see there are two ways you can handle right one is we again i have a paper what i show is when a new ceo comes into a firm you know what he does he has an incentive to show that everything was bad until then this is called big bath hypothesis hmm. you take a big bath so that you you reduce the uh, the the expectation expectation to start with and then you create space for outperformance this is what ceos also do best of the best ceos unfortunately the prime minister did not believe in that so he thought that and and i think he under appreci- under appreciated the issue also i don't think he knew about all these forbearance and you know he knew that he has this famous thing that uh, 2008 tak itna loan diya 8 8 aur 15 ke beech jitna loan diya wo that was more than uh, 47 to 2008 that he kept saying in his rallies hmm. but kyun diya kahan gaya ye this is because of this provision hmm. that you just imagine as a banker you can just lend and if there is a default restructure that is how these malyas and modis and nirav modis got created hmm. because you could have just given it to anyone you don't have to bother about credit standards at all it was a free for all just loot hmm. you know that persisted for this long i don't think they they were they were aware of the gravity of this issue so many bad firms got created so many and 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 even good firms had incentives to have bad managers who have hmm. connections than good managers who have ability and even they thought that because it is free for all why not take a, take yes. extra money and yes. uh, expand yeah extra money and they did two things one randomly expanded into areas of not their expertise without the uh, need. and secondly they did related party transaction related mm-hmm. party transaction where you remove take the money out of the company and pay to uh, firms which are uh, you know started by these promoters and others nobody knows where the money went this must have gone abroad hawala I, i don't know what happened so heavily they did related party transactions and then as you said this is called empire building what mm. you said is you know in our academic language we call it empire building where you just invest because there is free money available without thinking about because see this is called also called risk shifting because if it works this guy will benefit if it doesn't work bank will pay the you know take the cost so why should i bother so this was this was this was the environment uh, where the economy was running mm. and i am not surprised uh, that you know we went to 4% growth in 2018 or 19 and this is this corcher policy right if you create things so bad after some time even genuine people will start asking that why is it taking so much time to solve i agree this is that problem but this is such a kind of a problem Hmm. this is is such that it takes 10 years to recover what can you do i am hmm. not saying what they have done is is the ideal solution you know things could have so been done so what can better. be done i think the first thing that uh, you know we should understand the the, the issues uh, so one of the attempts that was done was asset quality review so first understand what the problem is right i am i support the asset quality review but then i have a paper with the with the xce and it's published in a top journal in finance this was they entered into asset quality review without being prepared what if what if you i know that there is cancer then what 
right so mm. when you get into an examination you should have some uh, uh, thing about treatment mm. so banks they realized banks had no capital when they did that asset quality review they realized that npa is not 2% it's 11% mm. you know it's from gradually 7 to 11% but then this asset quality review should have been uh, accompanied by a plan to infuse capital and that was and and that time it would have been like 4 5 lakh crore and today they gave away you know yesterday your that decision cost 2.2 lakh crore some with 4 5 lakh crores uh, you know uh, uh, capitalization either either government should have infused or privatized the banks there is no other option hmm. that capital infusion did not happen along with asset quality review so that is the biggest uh, missing the bus if i can say and this was like earlier at least there was a pretense that things are going good see there is some benefit of pretense also so uh, uh, you know everybody was pretending things are going good and it's not that all loans were bad loans there were some genuine loans were made somehow it was going on you know you were pretending to be good now there is no pretense also you just opened everything you and know showed how bad the situation is yes and but there is no repair so then credit completely collapsed so when 30% credit growth was happening 25% was bad but 5% growth or maybe that was genuine now that there is no the, you know that there is no capital so that is why 2017 18 18 19 19 20 if you see credit growth became zero you know for smes and all it was negative so the, the reason being the banks didn't have capital so even now i think they are not adequately capitalized so either privatize you know i know it is it is difficult and not not that straight forward or bring in uh, the required capital so mm-hmm. whatever you do bad bank and and shift the asset somewhere eventually banks need capital if you if they are not well capitalized you will not have lending picking up that's one aspect second aspect is you have to remove this risk aversion the cvc sitting on uh, public sector bankers head who uh, cv central vigilance commission okay. see the problem with the civil servant is that you can be called on uh, even 5 years after retirement hmm. that and the worst point is the the po- the fact that something we can in npa becomes a, po- a reason for enquiry which is a very bad thing you know when you sh- first people should realize loans can become npas uh, you should have reason to believe that this guy has done something wrong that should be a re- you know uh, even if it's not become an npa you should arrest such people but they do reverse they start from after something becomes an npa then they start an enquiry so uh, so bankers are also- I, i don't think they are competent to even judge yeah uh, that's that's i have not met any of those officials i don't know whether they are or, or even if they are yeah. but because it takes so long uh, and and sometimes they ho- call people who are retired also imagine that age you have to go and sit in front and they hold pensions uh, and all that so that risk aversion has to you know we should be willing to tolerate some amount of corruption hmm. let it be you know uh, it's not that we will we will have a zero corruption anywhere uh, but the you know the side effect is much higher i think that's that the kind I th- of thing yes i think i think pay you know the, the other problem with psus is that at the lower level their salaries are much higher than uh, private banks and when you enter higher level, higher level it's 120th it's that bad yeah, so yeah, yeah. Uh, so th- i think the across the civil service yes, that is the that's, problem and then they have immense power so you give immense power you don't pay it's like you are you are inviting corruption and then uh, uh, you know so either privatize or reform or think about some way you know one way i think is a via media even in psu banks if you see their insurance companies sbi life for example hmm. that works as well as a private insurance company you, you if you have encountered anyone from sbi life you will not feel it's a psu at all uh, it's a subsidiary of a psu so i think they should create so for example fintech these psus have crazy amount of data right create a fintech firm within this psus which which can use this data but run them as private like they're doing this insurance companies mm. or mutual funds mm. i think that's one suggestion you know i'm trying to pass it on to policy makers uh, maybe if they see your program uh, i think I, there will be <laughs> there, there will be there will be resistance yeah. uh, to that but i think if the, if it is run like a private uh, firm and mm. and you want to maintain psu character you can still maintain yeah. so something needs to be done so capital is required there is no running away from capital you can't get away by financial engineering uh, and escape capital you there is no other option you have to suffer that and the second thing is this cvc thing as to i think these things need to be done do you think the because of the 
crash in credit lending uh, do you think the job creation is also being affected majorly because of that yeah so you know uh, it 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 directly impacts investments you know uh, and and obviously impacts jobs so that's why i'm saying we, sh- we should not worry about that diffi- see the the problem is because we are uh, so much we we pay so much attention to what these rating agencies and all say about india hmm. is we become obsessed with the deficit number hmm it's more than the number it's about why this deficit uh, you know where is it getting used hmm. now if you use this to triple your uh, pm uh, uh, krishi samman nidhi that's one one scheme which i am not a fan of Uh, 6,000 crores. 60, 6,000 uh, rupees. Annual 90,000 yeah, 90, crores. crores. Because thanks to Bengal, its bill actually comes to 70 odd crores. Because they don't take. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the bill is lower than yeah. uh, what is budgeted. Thank you, Mamta. Yeah, they, they don't take it. But then, let's say you, you triple it. And, and, and that's why your deficit goes up. Versus, you tell the markets that, look, this is the bank. Uh, capital position and we have to increase this capital hmm. and this is a one time for capital and for that you need take a hit on uh, deficits i don't think even i don't know what will be the reaction on that day budget day may be bad but over time markets will realize that the benefits of capitalizing banks is much more you know we talk about this fiscal uh, multiplier this multiplier building roads and all that i think if you capitalize banks your returns to the economy will be much much more than what what you will get by building roads i mm-hmm. i i'm not i'm not saying roads are not important you know i'm a big That fan of keep going i am a big fan of uh, the transport minister nitin gadkari uh, yes yeah. uh, you know some you know i am a very big fan of what what he is what he has done uh, because i i recently drove some 4000 5000 kilometers i went really? to my village and oh. you know uh, my my uh, from hyderabad to my place is 800 760 kilometers and i passed through three states and you should see the pleasure of driving you know uh, it's it's a different experience you know if somebody some people sitting abroad are friends kuch nahi badla i said just come and drive you know that alone will tell you what is they will changed. complain about the toll taxes <laughs> yeah you know that's a pleasure right we bangalore you know, i used to drive from mangalore to bangalore udupi to bangalore huh. and they used to have 30 minute queues in front of uh, toll. this toll now it's like 30 seconds and and everybody is using that uh, you know uh, electronic way of paying mm-hmm. so anyway having said that despite that i think if given our situation capitalizing bank will have the biggest uh, returns bank for the buck bank for the buck uh, <laughs> than any other infrastructure spending because this is uh, central to everything and how much would that require 3 4 lakh crore i think it may be slightly more now because see the problem is it will keep increasing it will keep increasing one and secondly you don't know now also because after covid also there was some forbearance uh, sme still they don't recognize losses so we actually don't know what is the actual capital in the banks if you go and tell the bankers they will say no no now it's all clean and all it may not be as bad as uh, 2008 to 2015 but still the uh, capital is not uh, you know if you go and ask bankers they'll say look we are all above regulatory capital uh, on in, in books they were above in 2014 also 2013 also only when they when the you did the rules different so when you did the aqr you realized yeah. so i maybe think maybe another aqr needed yeah i think you know it should not be public you know there is, you can do it and you no, need not announce the results yeah. you can do it internally as rbi and find out what is the true capital of all these banks maybe so another aqr should be yeah, done yeah but private i i i would say don't disc- don't make it public the result yeah, internal can and make them uh, infuse capital and i think they are definitely in much better shape than they were in 2014 hmm. maybe one or two lakhs should should suffice especially the weaker banks and then it should also followed by two things management reforms governance should improve the board should consist of people who can question the ceo they should have the ability to understand you know one of the things with boards i see you know uh, this this nai committee report is out there you will be surprised if you read nai committee report these people spend lot of time discussing taxi kaun sa taxi lena hai uska uh, <laughs> you know this is these are and operational issues reimbursement and, and, and then, then <laughs> risk in 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 the board hmm. you know the 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 these management you know the, when i said cvc it's not just one thing the whole management of uh, banks all these bank board that they created i don't think has had any impact so you need to get good people on the board who can ask tough questions to the ceo and 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 make them accountable and pay them well 
pay them well make and make them accountable not in the cvc sense in the market sense uh, i think both of them if they are done simultaneously one without the other is not going to help just infuse capital it will be uh, money down the drain so both mm-hmm. of them should happen simultaneously one of the features of the, this finance minister and i see that even with arun jaitley uh, which seems like narendra modi's policy that he is very uh, you know fiscally fundamentalist yeah very conservative in spending right <clears throat> except it's when very much necessary yes but very conservative yes so is that a reason why they are you know pulling back their hand that we should not put so much money there maybe let's wait what happens yeah this finance minister is not as fiscally conservative as arun jaitley was mm. arun jaitley was classic uh fiscally conservative us types yeah us types you know uh, proper uh, you know milton friedman would have loved him uh, <laughs> and 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 trust me because he he cleaned up and and focused on reforms you know mm. now we know how difficult it is to bring in something like a gst or uh, ibc and things like that we had space to mm. respond during covid suppose he had and and some of the uh, supporters of the government also oh, you know when i the, somebody like an academic like me cannot be in any camp because we go by data and some of the supporters of uh, this government also when arun jaitley was following those policies you would you would hear repeatedly you know he should spend he should spend he, he should increase demand and all that just imagine if he had done all that and and come now if you are already this 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 we were sitting at 6 7% deficit you know our situation would have been horrible by now so he took the pain uh, of course the political cost was borne by the prime minister of course but then he took a decision to take that pain and clean up uh, rather than just spending uh, uh, left right and center so mm-hmm. this finance minister is slightly different i think she is more open to uh, uh, more deficits and i worry about it because it was good this is the problem with these kind of things right once you get this signal that having fiscal deficit is is good because all bad policies have positive impact first any bad policy you know this is again milton friedman's uh, uh, way of judging a good or a bad policy mm. anything which immediately shows amazing results go back go back to 2008 if i had said this in 2009 that forbearance is bad people would have kicked me out because economic growth bounced from 3.2% of course we didn't go to minus 7% there 3.2% to 9% 9% was Within unprecedented year. year year and a half rest of the world had not recovered europe was europe kept struggling till 2014 india was one of the fastest to recover and at that time if i had said so people like us will become very unpopular that i think that this uh, you know this policy of maintaining very high fiscal deficits mm. uh, uh and 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 and, and uh, that's not going to uh, eventually you will have to print money to you know or or Uh, borrow during bad times is different see what happens when you when you have fiscal deficit what is fiscal deficit government is spending more than its earning right where do you get it from either you print money or you tax you know or you borrow there are only three options there is no other option now during bad times like covid it made i am a total supporter of the previous budget because nobody was any way investing and government goes and borrows it's fine it doesn't distort any investing incentives so the 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 when they had this 18 19 lakh crore uh, deficits last mm-hmm. year i think it makes total sense because uh, but now when the economy is is picking up uh, forget this february 24th and ukraine now when i see this budget which is everybody appreciated and i also appreciate in lot of in parts but i when i see the body language and the way people talk you know when when they talk it looks like look we had this policy of including capital expenditure and it worked right so this is this is the way to go hmm. right that is not the way to go because it's something that works during bad times doesn't work during good times good times private sector also is willing to inter- invest and if you go and borrow from you know we have a fixed pool of savings hmm. so our our total for example our gdp is 250 lakh crores we save 30% so that's 75 lakh crores and get you get some 6 7 lakh crores of fdi this is the pool of savings you have when private sector is not willing to invest i totally support this idea of government borrowing and investing but when private sector becomes willing to invest you, you have to reduce an environment for that environment for that if you then if you take a signal that look i did that and that worked mm. that is the fear i have now 
hmm. that either you end up crowd this is this cr- so called crowding out thing basically the same mistake as 2008 yeah. that it worked for la- for first one year yeah. one and a half year yeah. and then you continued for next seven years when it was not needed yes, and 2000, it da- did more damage yes there is a difference that was a fraud yeah that was i would say now with the benefit of hindsight it was a uh, it it was a policy that they they knew it's bad but yeah, still it is continued. still continued so i think that was an intentional fraud hmm. uh, i have by 2011 anyone with the uh, and and there are so many committee reports it's not that again i am not saying from benefit of you can you can read rbi committee reports in 2011 saying this is going if you add np and restructured we are already at 7% mm. we are already at 8% nothing was done mm. so that was a different kind of i don't think we are anywhere close to this, this is a kind of a ideological uh, uh, kind of a view that uh, people think that this will work mm. genuinely not that they have any ill intentions mm. they think because they have got that feedback that it's going to work so it so this is that that there is this difference a between mistake that mistake nonetheless n- mistake nonetheless in my view yeah. and maybe i may be wrong but in my view because if you if if you when private sector is picking up if you also go and compete with them and don't reform and banks crowd and crowd out all the crowd out all the private investments yeah. how much ever roads you make it's not only about roads you you need private sector to use those roads yeah. you know you need all those other uh, stuff also yeah. so that i think my fear is this will continue to be in the range of 6 to 7% for a foreseeable future unless we have crazy inflation because once you stop borrowing then the third option is printing notes that's that's, that's my fear that's the worst thing you can do unless you are getting out of the government in 2 years yeah then you should not do that yeah you should not do that yeah. so then then it's like open to all inflation then yeah. you will have cra- then you are you can't out can't get out of it then it will take another 5 10 years to solve so yeah. this uh, when i see body language of advice uh, <coughs> economic advisors to the government coming out and saying look we you guys were saying no less fiscal deficit we increase fiscal deficit and the economy recovered uh, right and then that's that is right that that kind of policy should should But continue but how do you see the fiscal path the government has given for the next 3 years so fiscal, is that moving in the right direction fiscal paths of course uh, uh, as i said fact that budget is conservative and they have a bumper tax collection hmm. but bumper tax collection remember a part of it is because of inflation uh, you know your official numbers will take time hmm. but your actual tax collection is actual uh, you know inflation had already picked up and inflation is showing uh, higher tax growth hmm. part of it not everything so my worry is you know we may not respect that uh, path Uh, mm. you know the from uh, 6.8 to eventually 4.5 mm. i i i think things can be steeper than that because we had touched 3.1 3.2 mm. uh, during jetly time mm. and and we had almost reached uh, <coughs> uh, and and if banks had clean they had cleaned up banks along with i think we would have reached and if there was no covid that would have been a bottom and we would have had a sustained increase in growth from there Hmm. because uh, uh government budget was clean government balance sheet was clean got had the fiscal capacity would have you know ba- some banking reforms had started but we had another shock hmm. my fear is this they may, path is okay but they may not follow the path you know you will always have some reason or the other you know not necessarily like ukraine you will have some shock or the other going on and in that context if you take this wrong message that increasing deficit is the way to go hmm. and and show some increase in capital expenditure uh and 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 you you know it's it's seven and a half lakh crores in a 40 lakh crore budget is not like still spending all the money on revenue let's mm. let's i know it's seven and a half lakh crore much bigger than 3 4 lakhs we were spending before mm. i i totally respect that but in a budget of 40 lakh crore as a proportion of budget yeah you know it, 2003 capex was 25% of the budget the vajpe budget 25% which is we are nowhere you know we are praising capex now in 2003 budget and their budget was 70 or 78000 crore actually spent it spent 1 lakh 12000 crore next 6 7 years we couldn't cross it we marginally crossed if you see capex spending in 2003 4 and you compare it with 8 9 you will be surprised that despite inflation even nominally 8 9 was either very close or even lower than 3 4 so that that kind of capex spending is and know, what is the number now now it's 7 you can take 7 and a half over 40 is 18 19% 18 19 percent. we had during again upa we had gone to 11% so 11 12% again so that 
you know i don't have much problem with upa 4 to 8 ideologically i have other issues other than uh, economics uh, but economics 4 to 8 was fine reasonable uh, but starting 8 you know they started another trick that announce very high capex in the budget and then when it comes to uh, revising it revising it down revise downwards mm. actual revise further downwards mm. because nobody cares see because the actual will come 2 years later mm. so if you take actuals the capex to total government spending ratio had touched 10 11% which is now 18 19% but the way it is being sold to us now as if it is some historical high or something which is not true mm. uh the watch pay spending uh, towards the end of the india shining campaign was a true campaign you know it was in all fairness it was a true campaign but took some time for it for it to show up do you think the people make this comment also because 2004 to 2008 you mentioned high growth yes. years yes do you think that had something to do with vajpayee's lot. reforms it had lot to do with vajpayee reforms not mm. some mm. lot uh, because that uh, you know the, the low inflation low deficits uh, high spending on capex and execution all that uh, you know had a basically gave everything on the platter every con- and and the last quarter of watch pay also was 8.4% growth hmm. you know we had we had touched 8.4 but having said that if government despite having l- left parties with them did not do anything to derail it to their credit and continued reforms for example uh, small scale industries one of the major reforms that watch pay government did and started from narsimha rao is uh, during indira gandhi time almost everything was reserved for small scale industries you can't manufacture anything uh, you know all other than this heavy engineering product everything had to be manufactured by small scale industries now that made indian products super uncompetitive because y- you cannot get benefit of scale at all hmm. now dereservation you have labor problem also all kinds of stuff regulations yeah regulation so dereservation started during narsimha rao time and vajpay almost abolished it you know the 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 entire list the list was removed hmm. and that policy was continued uh, uh you know, reduction in uh, central excise uh, which vajpay uh, initiated that policy also they continued so 4 to 8 it was it i would i would say the rhetoric may be whatever you know you you can i was out of college that time and joined the job rhetoric was very negative or whatever about uh, uh, they didn't even narega started later you know 6 7 6 they announced and you know fully they, blown in 2008 yeah fully 2008. blown in 2008 so until they announced the debt waiver in 2008 it was it was not bad at all hmm. uh, it it all took a u turn with the 2008 debt waiver and that's where I, my first research paper was on the 2008 debt waiver yeah so i wanted uh, to ask you about that also because recently yeah they had another fffni of you know declaring all these waivers yeah before 2019 yeah. elections right yes. in chatisgarh Jhar, uh, yes. jharkhand it, no no chatisgarh rajasthan and madhya pradesh yes and uh, i know i don't know what is the status of that right but what does that debt waiver announcement for farmers in 2008 what did it do then and what it did now yeah so i have two papers on that what we did was we went to a bank and i i should tell you how carefully we do the work mm. because otherwise these days unfortunately people just give opinion without uh everybody is uh, just just so what now. what we did was and 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 why uh, a peer reviewed published research and i a lot of times i i find people who are very supportive of the government mm. uh, also Uh, completely sort of demolishing peer review and uh, saying this is all nonsense biased and all that uh, but that's not true uh, of course it's not perfect but what peer review does is that there is somebody who is as trained as you uh, as who has tough questions on why should i accept this paper right that brings brings in a lot of discipline and i'm not saying this is the only uh, way to do it but there is some value to this peer reviewed work mm. so for example i'll take you through that uh, 2008 paper you know what we did that uh, how we identified its effect there are two things one is that waiver had this feature that if you are more than 2 hectares if you have land more than 2 hectares you will get only 25% waiver and and if you have less than 2 hectares you will get 100% waiver so that's around 4 to 5 acres yeah 2 hectares 4 to 5 acres so what we did and this this number was declared much before to the bank you and, and then there was allegation that they man- the problem with that that government is everything uh, nothing was clean you yeah. know but to the extent it was clean 
now what we did we picked up people at 2 hectare cut off so it's called a technique called regression discontinuity where if you have 1.99 versus 2.01 otherwise you are similar you know your your cropping pattern and all that otherwise you can say this if result is because of something else these guys mm. are similar and then we applied that technique and we studied their loan performance behavior of those who are between say 1.98 to 2 and 2 to 2.02 or 2.05 and we found a very clear discontinuity those who got waiver uh, those who are between 1.98 and 2 they just started stopped repaying all their loans not just that particular loan unconnected loans mm-hmm. you know i have another paper uh, uh, which is based on a microfinance intervention in andhra pradesh if you remember there was a microfinance crisis in andhra pradesh mm. what a waiver does is that it kills discipline not only in that particular loan it kills complete loan discipline because you get an incentive and hope and that and the government will, will waive everything and then you get the signal that if i default that itself will create uh, so much noise around that somebody will budge later so it at that the lower end uh, it completely killed uh, loan discipline hmm. and and we also show and it's very interesting in one of the other papers published in journal of law and economics what we show is those farmers who had suffered a shock at that time who had drought their discipline did no and got a waiver they repaid that's very interesting it's only those who had no shocks and still got a waiver those are and they were majority mm-hmm. because it was not a very bad drought year it was one of the best years in fact the year in which waiver was given was a very good year in terms of uh, rainfall and all that mm. so waiver in itself sometimes i so again we should not take an ideological position here sometimes when you are hit with a shock uh, you may need support that does not distort behavior it's only when you give uh, when there is no shock and only for political purpose and the person receiving also knows that this is political then he or she has an incentive to expect this every time hmm. so if you condition it on a shock which is outside your control and when the government in power yeah. is giving it just before the elections, elections. you know yeah. that the next time they will do also it. they will do they so will do let's it. not pay for the them? next 5 yeah. years yes yes that is so waiver itself is not bad waiver when it is conditioned on a so called what we call as an exogenous shock on which you have no control hmm. uh, that is fine you know that's what we show that does not create distortion it hmm. is this politically driven one so very targeted when it's yes. very much needed yeah. then you give it, it give but it. not narega for example increase narega during covid it's fine hmm. you know that will not prevent you know we show in another paper we investigated narega you know very interesting thing what we find is when you increase narega people stop going to factories in those villages so we find a clear in areas where narega was introduced similar pattern of reduction in employment in uh, in in factories so hmm. people are coming out of you know factories where they could have learned Mm. and latching on to this 100 rupees for 3 months now which is 260 uh, instead of going to a city and struggling mm. and now get 260 and produce nothing so when you make it a staple diet so you should distinguish between emergency medicine and a staple diet the upa policy was to make all emergency medicines as staple diets mm. on ideological grounds that was a problem i have no problem with the tools that they used again the forbearance i said if you ask me was it necessary in 2008 yes it was definitely necessary like it was now but did you why did you con- continue for and and start benefiting from it and enjoying the benefit mm. and then gain political mileage out of it and continue it forever that was a problem mm. so in 2008 uh, narega had also come into full force yes just before the elections yes uh, how do you see that policy because i think i re- remember writing an article on it uh, in 2017 or 18 right that the narega was of sonia gandhi was much different than n- the current narega there have been some reforms yes. by the modi government yes so the initial uh, you know uh, statement by the prime minister that i don't want to uh, you know remove this narega and why want to keep this as a failure uh, <laughs> I, I uh, shining failure of yeah, your yeah, this thing yeah, yeah. so uh, but there have been some reforms in narega yes, itself yes but as a principle because now the talk is that we should have urban employment guarantee scheme also this is rural but we should have uh, for urban areas also and we don't know uh, congress might promise that in 2024 sure <clears throat> so 
keeping that in mind principally how do you see that so principally what has happened you know i have studied uh, uh, wage payment delays and all in narega one thing that has happened for sure after introduction of aadhar into narega two things have happened wage payment delays have dramatically come down that's one secondly it has actually become a counter cyclical tool so whole see the problem is this is a counter cyclical tool that means mm. when things are bad you should increase this when things are good you should reduce it mm. now what has happened is we see in a paper that after this aadhar introduction that this narega when in situ- in areas where there are droughts and where there are economic shocks localized mm-hmm. shocks we do find people uh, taking more narega wow. this is the difference between sonia gandhi narega and uh, modi narega so it wow. was not counter cyclical before so it's it has become, targeted this it is time. it is more targeted that's one wow. interestingly we have i am just finishing a paper you know i was i was typing the uh, sort of last line uh, before coming here what we did is covid mein kya right so covid it's very interesting is that what we find is this bharat net program where they introduced uh, internet uh, broadband they are laying internet. down the cables yes. so the nice thing is there are phase 1 areas and phase 2 areas ha huh. phase 1 was implemented before covid so what we did we picked up villages phase 1 villages that's why again i i just want to tell you how careful our identification is we identified phase 1 areas where this uh, bharat net was implemented and neighboring regions where it is not implemented the reason why picked re- neighboring is other factors should be similar right this is very very similar areas mm. what we find is during covid demand for narega significantly gone up in areas where there was internet mm. the information availability all that and not only that then we brought in another angle migrant districts mm. migrant districts where there was a sudden inflow of workers where internet was introduced the demand for narega went up even more so narega has you know served its purpose during bad times now which was not doing that but having said that i think uh, some credit should go to the congress that they they set up the infrastructure and 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 work for it. that that should go but here now again i have this feedback fear because they see it's working during bad times hmm. my fear is will it give a bad f- uh feedback and and that's a nice thing about this budget from 1 lakh crore and this is one thing that they have actually done like unlike the fiscal deficit last year was 1 lakh crore again they scaled back the budget this year and the finance minister very well explained that look that was emergency and now it's normal hmm. every emergency measure should be done like that It, these things should be scaled up during bad times and scaled down during bad times that scaling down can during good times good, good times sorry impose political costs and and in the in the case of narega they have done it so mm. uh, i think modi narega and sonia gandhi narega are very different in terms of their actual delivery mm. there's one more aspect which has not been carefully studied is the outcomes see we all assume that it is filling ditches and it's waste mm. right maybe that has changed because they are talking about geo tagging and things like that i have not studied maybe this is creating actual infrastructure now i don't know uh, i have not studied it so that's another they are also using machinery rather than this yes they have increased that proportion yeah, and all that yeah. so i don't know what has been the impact of that but it has changed but you know grudgingly or whatever some credit needs to be given uh, to people who started it yeah uh you mentioned uh, taxes yes uh, corporate taxes yes that is one area that is very hard for people to communicate to yes aam uh, aadmi yes ki एक कंप्लेंट आता है ना कि आपने ऑयल टैक्स जैसे बढ़ा रखा था right, right. एक्साइज का मेरे ख्याल से बत्तीस रुपये हो गया था uh. तो एक कंप्लेंट था कि गरीब लोगों पे टैक्स लगा रहे हो सबको पेट्रोल तो भरवाना ही पड़ता है uh, और इनका कम कर दिया right. तो वो दिखता है कि यार ये कंपनियों का कम कर दिया yes. तो वहाँ पर जो ट्रिकल डाउन इफेक्ट है आई नो सो मैनी पीपल हैव दिस ह्यूज प्रॉब्लम विद दिस विद दिस टर्म दिस डेज यस सो कॉल्ड रीगन टर्म यस बट इसमें कुछ तो ट्रिकल डाउन का इफेक्ट है बिकॉज दोज पीपल आर जॉब क्रिएटर्स एट द एंड ऑफ द डे यस एंड इफ दे आर टैक्सीज आर रिड्यूज राइट इट विल हैव it must have trickled down effect yes. i don't know for certain if it has but you can tell no i have studied this carefully yeah, so how what are the benefits yes uh, what has the what change has happened after those corporate taxes yes has the effective tax rate come down yes. and what are other benefits that accrued to the country to the aam aadmi aap usko kaise samjhayenge ki bhaiya ek corporate tax rate pehle dekho duniya mein itna kam hai hum itna bada rahe hain hamara 
कॉस्ट जो बिजनेस का है वो बढ़ रहा है right. तो वो कम्पिटेटिव नहीं है वो आम आदमी को कैसे समझाओगे आप कि right. वो आपके लिए भी बेनिफिशियल है राइट सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल दिस कंप्लेनिंग आम आदमी Uh, if you I am mean, not a politician so I can take a swipe at Aam Aadmi also hmm. I am not going to contest any elections there at the end of the day uh, 3 crore people 3 and 1/2 crore you know I know 7 crore people file taxes it is a 3 3 and 1/2 crore but that 3 3 and 1/2 crore also people say 90% of the you know 5% have 90% of the income hmm. but if you look at taxes it's even worse that hmm. 1% pays almost every tax hmm. the most people who crib are not paying these taxes it is those the or, bad guys are only 10 10 or 20000 nothing rupees. you know that <laughs> even if you exempt all of that nothing is going to happen yeah. right so it is those those uh, so called bad guys they are paying this 95% of the taxes so this whole notion that all taxes are paid by middle class and all that is is bunkum hmm. you know you can look at data and see do the same inequality analysis when it comes to tax payment Well, the p- same thing that they do on income, do it on tax payment. You will realize it is more That's unequal. That's a good idea. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> you should write a paper more on. unequal. So they, those are the people paying taxes. First of all, yeah. now what did this tax cut do? You know, I again I studied it carefully. I, what I did was there were some companies which were already paying lower taxes. Mm. So obviously they did not benefit. This was an option. You know, if if you want, you take the lower tax. Otherwise, you can go with the old. That's how this tax uh, cut was announced. So I compared. what happened to those who benefited from this tax cuts and those who did not benefit from tax cuts hmm. uh, because they already were paying lower taxes what i find is those who benefited they have substantially increased investments even during covid times hmm. because what followed was covid years even in the two covid years those who benefited from tax cut and these are people across the industries this is not one industry and i have written a paper and i have i also wrote a newspaper article on this recently i think it came in indian express new indian express hmm. that those who cut uh, benefit from tax cut have hmm. increased investments as far as employment is concerned i don't have data unfortunately so investments must have led to uh, employment that's that's quite possible hmm. but it is not that ye jo people think that tax cut kar liya dividend they did not increase dividends they did not increase related party transactions so the whole notion that uh, the rich he that person rich benefited becoming richer ha so they did not take away through dividends or uh, uh, related party transaction like in two th- in fact 2008 mein jo loan aapka jo deposit ka paisa tha usko corporate fellow he took it and took it to his home through related party transaction and bought fancy cars and yachts and what not that was not that is not what happened in this tax cut in this mm-hmm. tax cut it has led to inv- and surprisingly it has also led to more csr you know those guys who benefited from tax cut have done more than this 2% that was my sort of subtle message to the finance minister mm-hmm. that in the us highest csr happened when government spending to uh, gdp was 10% people will do voluntary csr that time so if you force people uh, with a with this 2% csr tax which is which is one policy where this government has made congress policy even worse hmm. you know uh, much worse that was voluntary and these people have made it a tax complete tax hmm. so csr actually those those people who benefited other finding that i have on tax cut they actually made more csr Mm. then uh, so cutting taxes is a much more way of, better way of doing csr than forcing firms to do csr mm. and obviously this is led to so i think tax cut was an out and out success because it not only led to higher tax payment eventually they paid high, in absolute terms they paid higher tax payment it led to more investments it led to more csr and i'm sure it must have led to more employment but i don't have data so i don't speak without having data so i i, I can't comment on that so you know that was a major success in my view so this it it has benefited aam aadmi because that ultimately remember growth can happen only there are two ways either you increase investment or increase productivity there is no other way there is no other way you can create growth in the long run it is investments or productivity and you won't get jobs if there are no there is no growth so i think this was a uh, you know what you call master stroke like, like people don't like this word if you, they'll say you are a bakht or a chamcha or something if you say master stroke but it mm-hmm. was indeed a master stroke so i think they, that you know that 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 has had uh, uh, you know tremendous pause and they should consider doing it for individual side also yeah what what is the demand on the individual side ki direct taxes mein reform hona chahiye ek baat sunne ko milti rehti hai to wahan pe kya reform hona chahiye reform ye hai ki you know at 
those people who are actually paying taxes you know mm. and let me disclose you know i i, I you know people like me get reasonably good salary in isb and people like us end up paying crazy amount of you know in terms of i don't fall under that extremely high bracket mm. but in, in the name of surcharge and this charge and all kinds see people like us who are salaried will definitely pay we don't have a choice but lot of people who have a choice who do small businesses and who do very by the way i was doing a survey of small businesses there are many people who do who make lot of money mm. they have a choice they can do accounting gimmicks and all that and not show when you lower tax rate what happens is your incentive to employ devious methods and high taxes goes down hmm. see we had a tax rate of 97% in 1970s marginal tax rate and the tax to gdp was 2-3% again i i i i while i disagree with most many policies of chidambaram one of the great things he did in the in the 90s 96 he brought down the tax rate to 30 20 10 you know imagine how unpopular it must be 40% to 30% and cutting taxes at the upper end in in that 1996 so called dream budget which was mocked at by everyone that time so and now from 30 we have gone back to 40 so the same policy which increased dramatically the tax to gdp ratio and see what happened to tax to gdp ratio afterwards mm. you have data so the better way to increase tax to gdp ratio is to reduce tax rate and not increase it and now you know i know everybody will say sri lanka gi lanka and all that it it's and and look what happened with corporate tax you reduce tax and 48% growth you know it's not uh, the tax direct tax collection this year is 48% higher than last year way above any other budget so i think something is to be done on the individual tax first compliance they making it simpler you know that that they are doing but even the rate itself at the top end so just making this 5 lakh to se- that 5 lakh guy is not paying tax but he's vote, he's voting he's in voting, huge fair numbers fair enough yeah i know <laughs> the politician will not be able to say anything against that 5 lakh person yeah i know you know he is uh, a citizen and and should be respected but the tax is paid by somebody who's earning 50 lakhs and and 80 lakhs and there also somebody who's getting salary cannot hide it. that person will pay but there are a lot of small businesses who don't pay taxes because it's it's extremely high mm. uh, so that needs to come back to 30% you know i un- i again understand the logic of surcharge because surcharge central government gets to keep itself you know it's very naive to suggest that don't have surcharge abolish and all that we should understand political economy also we can't totally neglect when you advise as an economist you cannot totally neglect political economy have surcharge like you have done for uh, corporate tax you know mm-hmm. there is surcharge there also bring it to some 23% and add some surcharge i think 30 20 10 clean uh, uh, if you can make it with the uh, good starting point i think tax collections will actually go up not go down mm Uh, interesting and and it will have the same effect that the corporate tax has had uh we were talking about gst yes. before uh, i'm no expert on gst i should yeah, tell yeah, you my yeah. area of interest is banking but i'll tell you yeah, whatever but, i uh, i was reading an article uh very interesting article which was uh, which showed that uh, before gst the tax collection on the same aspects mm-hmm. and now post gst the collection to gdp ratio has actually been the same so what can we conclude from that yes As gst has gst not really benefited us because recent despite recent collections going up to 1.7 lakh crore some month yeah uh, i think if that sustains it it will be huge but still uh, co- even compared to earlier regime it's more or less the same okay so first of all it's too early to uh, you know the the average that you're talking about incorporates first year of gst second year of gst yeah there where it should have gone down dramatically think about it you abolished uh, so many taxes you increased the entry level you know registration requirement in some of the laws were 5 lakhs 10 lakhs you took it to 40 lakhs you reduced the overall uh, tax rate on, on most commodities exempted many of them brought in input credit mm-hmm. see earlier two taxes were not talking to each other many of the taxes you couldn't take uh, input credit vat and excise would not talk to each other mm. now somebody again i am a south indian so i'll give masal dosa so when you sell masal dosa you can get credit for excise you have paid on something else in your in your restaurant i know restaurants are w- w- working on a different thing restaurant is a bad example mm. you should think about something because they had they sh- they shouted and created this 5% tax regime let's think about something else so 
you give input tax credit of all taxes you uh, uh, avoided cascading effect then uh, reduce tax rates and then increase the registration zero tax on uh, uh, money so many this, commodities so many commodities yeah. despite that you did not go down dramatically itself is a big achievement in my view and then you had all kinds of implementation issues this is not working that is not working exporters crying this guy crying so if you see the path same data if i take that data and if i instead of looking at the averages in economics marginal is what what matters and what is happening now you will see what is happening now we are substantially above that average this year so it has taken 2 3 4 years for uh, things to settle down because they had to fix the technology they brought in e-way bills uh, you know Im- initially they had this invoice matching people started crying and now they implemented invoice matching so the full force of gst is showing up now uh, fixed technology invoice matching e-way bill uh, punitive action and and all uh, all sorts of thing mm. and and hopefully the the guarantee will go away this year you know sent- this is nowhere anywhere happened in the world no state government tells this central government has underwritten a 14% guarantee nominal guarantee you know that was so uh, generous or you know not not so thoughtful of arun jetli to give it you know 14% nominal guarantee and that time inflation was 3% uh, you know uh, and and despite that maintaining that ratio in first 2 3 years itself is an achievement and now if you take what is happening now we are far, i think it has taken off now Hmm. uh i think in next 2 3 years if you repeat the same exercise you will find different set of numbers okay. the same exercise before and after if you wait for another 2 3 years and do the same numbers hmm. you will find uh, first 3 years and then plot year on year instead of taking average you will find this graph going up and 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 but again there also i i have a, a, a sort of fear that they should use this to sort of reduce rates now that yeah. compliance is picking up but what that should be the ideal rate structure there i am no expert i don't know what the you know i i think about direct taxes much more than indirect taxes uh-huh. but uh, you know for example once they i recently bought a, a car and i saw you must have paid like 60% tax on yes. it yes yeah yes you know <laughs> my car is worth 40% of what it is yeah. so i was i was doing a training to uh, senior government officers 3 days ago you know Uh, uh from minister of finance itself uh, uh, you know that's very funny mm. so and and i told them that <laughs> i am also government employee it's 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 that you know uh, 70% of my work is for government only mm. if if i take all my spending and my income you know 70% government takes so it's you are also government employee and i am also government employee so all of us are government employees mm. so this these things you know which i understand the imposition of that because this 14% guarantee where will you bring from so i totally appreciate and understand imposition of that surcharge but once and there is a factor that these car and other these things like ac and all these things are considered sin goods in that sense not sin goods but you know luxury so luxurious yeah, 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 yeah. sin goods is i think tobacco and yeah, 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 uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. liquor yeah 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 so no, no that was a, that is how they sold it but the purpose was because see state governments were not willing to agree because mm. manufacturing states including those ruled by the bjp feared that because this is a consumption tax they feared that they lose uh, tax revenue because of gst and the government had to do something mm. uh, and and this was the i think the deal break you know uh, that that led to the closure of the deal that i will give you 14% guarantee but having given that guarantee you had to find a way of financing it and that's why they introduced surcharge now my hope is that once this 2022 that five year gets over they should not only remove the guarantee but also do away with the surcharge now surcharge has no rational if that you are not giving that guarantee my fear is that will not be done there will be some reason given that covid ke time pe zyada kharcha hua aur ye hua we had to borrow so we'll have to extend for another 2 years another 2 years so as Re- since you brought up regan regan has this famous statement yes. that there is nothing as permanent as a you know government program T- temporary government a program temporary government program, <laughs> yes right so that is my fear this yeah. this temporary things will uh, keep going up mm. so i think one of the hope i have is once they withdraw this uh, guarantee uh, at least there should be some action on that surcharge mm. and and this whole But idea they, of luxury and yeah there is some uh, problem with the car industry right. uh, they have some special love for it i think and that's why everybody is kind of leaving yeah. because it's very hard to make a good car right and sell it to consumers because 
50 to 60 percent is being taken away by the government yes i was reading uh, an, an analysis by someone on twitter i don't yeah. know if it's correct but yeah. i assume it is correct because it was saying that toyota fortuner i think it costs around 50 lakhs now yes uh, and toyota earns only 50000 on it yes no no i'll tell you my actual thing i 50, bought a, of 50, I, I, I was about to 30, buy a fortuner 36 lakhs is being taken away by the government yes so i was about to buy a fortuner then i bought this carnival uh, limousine recently kia carnival uh, kia carnival okay. so that uh, on road is 40 lakhs yeah so i thought it's a 40 lakh car and and, and nice uh, so now then i opened up that invoice <laughs> you know the the price that they have is 20 lakh something yeah. All, uh, taxes account for remaining 20 lakhs so 50%. All kinds, 50%. <laughs> and then road tax also. I, I you know I, I don't know whether I've counted that. So your yeah. whatever Twitter person has said is true. Yeah. For, at least for that segment. Now, yes, you may say luxury and all that. Fair enough. So uh, the question is that, you know, you can't uh, uh, solve, you know, if, if that is the way, if, if you don't want anyone to have any kind of luxury and live like Gandhian uh, way of life, then mm. you will have that kind of economy only. Yeah. So you can't have this uh, thing. Uh, that you know, the, the, every anything which makes people's life comfortable is a luxury, and we should we should live uncomfortably forever. Uh, you Even know? AC is not a luxury these days. Yeah, it's a necessity. Yeah, it's a necessity. <laughs> and 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 as the economy grows, I, I know we should be socially responsible and all that. But uh, this this attitude of somebody who's living a little bit better than you and me, you know, I, for for example, for me. Kia Carnival is not a luxury anymore because I have it. And somebody driving a one crore car, treating that as luxury and usko, uh, you know, th uh, that usko is the attitude car. I'm saying. Basically, anybody above me is luxurious. Yeah, it's luxurious. So we, when I was born, we didn't have toilets also. Yeah. So that time, you know, somebody who had a toilet was luxury. Mm -hmm. You know, then some cycle, we had cycle and you have Bajaj M80. You remember, there, I know yeah, you are yeah. not, maybe are not as old. No, so there used to be Bajaj also. M80. Yeah. And you had something better was luxury. You know, you there is if you keep that mentality will stop growth. Mm. You know, if somebody is living a luxury and, and if he's paying all taxes, you try to go to that level or become a total sadhu or whom it doesn't matter. That's okay. Yeah. Uh, At know. least some sense of uh, you know proportion should there be should there. be there yeah you can't take like 60 yeah. percent <laughs> <laughs> i mean yeah. if you're taking say at least for budget cars right yeah. 20 lakhs tak jo car hai, that is not luxury at yeah, all yeah you see the condition of cars yeah 20 lakh car is not a luxury <laughs> if you actually sit in it and see it's not a luxury yeah. car a luxury car you have to see and go to us and properly yeah. see that yeah, yeah, yeah. i mean it's crazy that they are taking us treating that as a luxury and because of that what we have is uh, cars like uh, maruti and uh, hyundai even hyundai has become so problematic these days yes. they're making tin ka dabbas yes compromising on safety yes now no matter how many uh, airbags you put there if in, on an accident and collision it's going to just yes completely uh, yes. get crushed yeah <laughs> what will uh, <laughs> mandatory uh, airbags do yeah so just to increase the mileage and now they have uh, this emissions ka target yes, also yes, yes. so they have to increase the mileage yes how will they increase their mileage just uh, lighten up the car yes don't put uh, too much weight into it. Usko bula khula bana do and ho gaya. Uh, average apne aap hi do, do <laughs> <bad jayegi. laughs> Then so, you will have problem with safety and you yeah. know, we used to have Omni. And, Even with cycle, if it hits yeah. very hard yeah. in a Maruti car, <laughs> yeah, it will yeah. get damaged. You know, I, I used to, we used to have Omni and, and yeah. uh, a truck goes in the highway, this would shake. And, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I have done that. So, uh, right now, I think it will just fly. Yeah, so I, I think the this this i think that mentality is changing it's yeah. not that bad now so treating anyone who's living a decent life as some kind of a chore and is stolen from you mm. uh, and treating everything as a zero sum game if i've become uh, you know slightly better off it has to be uh, because i've stolen it from someone mm. uh, that you know society also has to change hopefully things are improving yeah, i mean 20 lakh cars are having three star safety it's crazy <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> only in india yeah, the yeah. same cars are selling very fine with the high rated security and very good cars yeah. in the same models yeah. in other countries very yeah. fine yeah. that's why so i have hope that with this extra surcharge will be at least taken away and they will again with the rationalization i don't know whether they will end up increasing more or reducing more i have not done the calculations so uh -huh. i have not studied it but uh, I think this has been one of the most informative 
कॉन्वर्सेशन आई हैव एवर हैड विद एनी वन हेयर सो थैंक यू सो मच सर वेरी एजुकेटिंग सेशन आई एम श्योर पीपल विल लव इट uh thank you so much I, for coming i am i am actually worried you know as i have said oh. this is a platform which got people like vivek agnihotri and all that and ha- having brought such people and i don't know anyway so thanks for calling me uh, it was a privilege it, it was really uh, an honor to sit down with you yeah. thank you so much sir. thanks thanks please keep coming sure yeah. <laughs> thank you yeah.